I always loved school when I was a boy. Always loved school because I think there was something in me that said because I came from a big family where you constantly had the sacrifice, where you were battling with these uh, other 14 siblings for some kind of uh, attention or recognition. So um, originally, I didn't plan to go into art. I wanted to be a foreign language interpreter, and I had this idea that I wanted to work at the UN, and uh, and because I loved languages. But we were so poor that um, my parents had no money to send me to school. But I had this wonderful high school teacher, Mrs. Feinstein, and Mrs. Feinstein said, "You you go to college." Because she used to come to my house on Saturdays and say, well, "Get up, get dressed, you go with me to the Metropolitan Museum of Art." It always makes my day when I get an opportunity oh, to see you. Thank you, Ben. It makes my day. It makes many days for me to see you. Oh, boy. What was the year that you you were in my class? I, I started uh, high school in 1955. Well, then you were yeah. a freshman. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I came to Eastside in 1955, December of 1955. Oh, my God. And you were mm-hmm. in my first graduating class. Well. So I had you for four years. Well, I love that class. I love the class because um, I just felt that it was my retreat. And then the different things we learned in terms of, you know, I remember like watercolor and painting and then um, going to the museums uh, with you. That was just so wonderful because, you know, coming from a poor background, I didn't have that exposure. You know, what we have here is your first drawing of your etching. Oh, the, fir- the pulling sheet. Mm-hmm. I framed that. And your first yeah. oil that you did in college. Oh, my God. Because um, sometimes people tell me, oh, I have this and I have this and I don't remember. But I, I had fallen in love with printmaking, with etching, because to me it was like a, a baby being born. Yeah. But you didn't know what the baby was going to look like until you roll yeah, it until through that press oh, yeah. and looked at it on that paper and well, stuff like that. You were kind enough to give me your first yeah. pull. Well, I always felt like um, uh, um, people who I have a part of, they should have a part of me. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was young and there was a director of the Newark Museum called Sam Miller. And he uh, gave me an exhibition at the museum and they did a little film on the on 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 me for that uh, exhibition and they interviewed him although i don't think he'll ever lose and i certainly hope he doesn't because that's so far what has identified him i think he will always have that certain kind of bite that certain kind of social comment but i would hope that the imagery would 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 move perhaps more into something perhaps more universal i think he's ready for it now and at first, you know, like a young person, you think you know everything when you're young. And as you get older, you realize how little you know. And um, so I was upset. Why would he say that I'm doing, if he says I'm a good artist and I'm doing good stuff, why would he say, you know, because you think you're, you're so pumped up. And, and But the older I get, I hear what he's saying. Dance, um, I just, I love all kinds of dance. I love the ballet. I love, you know, I was a dancer of African dance. I love modern. Used to take modern, take jazz. And I think back to my father when we used to have little gatherings, social gatherings of the family or friends and stuff like that. And he used to say to me, you know, you could dance. I never paid it any attention, but I didn't know that it meant that I really love, love dance. So dance has always been a, a strong part of my life. Uh, when I lived in Newark, uh, me and this friend used to have an African dance troupe called the Newark African Dance Society from, I think it was from 68 till about 79 or 80, you know, and then I danced with the Chuck Davis Dance Company in New York for about uh, 18 years or more. I've had the privilege of having seen him perform on stage with the Chuck Davis Dance Company. Um, He was a good dancer, you know, he was a good dancer. I mean, Chuck didn't have too many people in his company who weren't good dancers. My personal philosophy is that travel is the best kind of education. And what's the obvious reason? You get exposed to different cultures. You get ex- ex- exposed to different um, uh, ways of thinking. 
um, you get exposed to the difference in the look of a place. My favorite country is, is always Cuba. And uh, one of the reasons is because um, it's a socialist country. I'm a socialist. But more important than that is the people and the culture, the cultural level there. You, would th you wouldn't think that they didn't have any money. That country is very poor, has very little money, but the level of education of the young people, it's superior than ours. And it's because one of the basic things that the young people don't have to worry about, they don't have to worry about working and going to school. So when they go to school, they have to work hard. Some of my friends and I uh, would gauge our, our opinion of other artists based upon how they handled Ben as students. Uh, in other words, if you could prosper and, and flourish as Ben's student in Ben's class, then we thought, all right, th this person's the real thing. Every place I go to in the world, I always go and check out their art schools because I always like to use it as a barometer of how are we doing. You know, like Ed Koch used to say, how we're doing. So that helps me to know how we're doing and where we're at, you know. I, I used to say to the students, um, when I go into a museum or a gallery, uh, especially a good museum in another country, I get inspired and depressed. Inspired in the sense that look at the great art, but depressed about look how far I'm going to have to go to make some kind of mark. Ideas that I'm working with right now in my art, I'm just excited by uh, because it's, it's all connecting with the environment. Um, I just had a show in London um, that I called the uh, Evolution Revolution, and it was basically taking the idea of the motif of wallpaper, but instead of wallpaper only being pretty decorative designs, they were uh, symbols or issues of the day, especially the environment, uh, such as pollution, such as what uh, the dietary f uh, 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 food that we eat, trying to eat healthy, uh, trying to uh, deal with conservation of things. But I do it as if it's a wallpaper design, but it's really dealing with real issues and stuff like that. In November, I have a solo exhibition opening up in Sacramento, California. Then in May, I have a big exhibition opening up in New York City. Uh, also next year, I'll be exhibiting, having a solo show in South Africa. Um, uh, on May, I'll be taking a group to the Havana Biennial. And my mother used to say to me, because all the time I'd be doing different things, and she said, you got to slow down, you got to slow down. And I didn't realize that... What it was say, really saying is you, you're going to be a workaholic, and now I guess I'm just addicted to it, and I can't stop doing it. But but I always remember this old uh, German dentist that I had, uh, and uh, one day she was working on my teeth, and she said, oh, Ben, you know, I'm retired and stuff. And so I said to myself, if you're retired... What are you doing working on my teeth? So I thought I'd ask her. And so she, I said, well, if you're retired, what are you doing working on my teeth? She said, Ben, all my doctor friends who retired and thought that that meant to just sit around and do nothing or just vacation and do nothing. She said they all died off. She said, as you're breathing, you got to keep the body moving. So I never forget that. And if you were to say anything essentially about me, I would say I wanted my life to be a purposeful life. Ben Jones, the activist, is an important part of his life and my life. He taught me to be an activist. And by an activist, I mean someone who is engaged in what's happening in the community and what's happening in the world. Um, I've had the opportunity to photograph most of his work. And a lot of times I saw his work as it was developing. Ben Jones would take a situation that's happening in the world, for instance, the BP oil disaster in Louisiana, and he can take that and create a dialogue about what happened and how it affected people. And that's one of the ways he uses his work being active. He's an activist. He's telling you a story of what happened. Uh, there are two artists who I think very influential in my art. One is Romari Bearden. The other one is um, um, Henri Matisse. Because uh, Henri Matisse in terms of pattern and Romari Bearden in terms of stories. And um, when I look at uh, what I'm doing today uh, in terms of 
taking this wallpaper pattern but making it have a story about something that's significant uh, in terms of our survival in the world today that if we don't start respecting the environment but at the same time um, it has to be good art. I think the Blood series is so powerful. It's like it's a, he's taken the hardest direction, the direction of Jackson Pollock, which everyone has shied away from, and he has picked up that uh, that um, uh, challenge. Uh, the, there's a word for it. The, the uh, you know when you throw the, the gauntlet, he's picked up that gauntlet, and he is taking it uh, in a direction that not even Pal uh, not even Jackson Pollock could imagine. You know, he's, 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 in the 21st century, he's re-examining the drip, and he's re-examining text-based art, and he's re-examining, uh, he's merging pop art with abstract expressionism. So all of these things that were happening in the 50s and 60s when he was a young man, he's making them vital again in the, in, in the first decades of the 21st century in totally new ways. So uh, I want to stay of purpose and I want to stay of energy and I feel great. I feel great, you know, praise God. And, um, <laughs> you know, on, uh, let onward, onward forward, whatever the uh, light is. Well, I would just um, think of Ben Jones as a constant inspiration and I think uh, when again, when it comes to his energy, when it comes to the way he pushes himself and how he creates art that is for the people, uh, it's, it's as an artist, I think it's admirable and it's not the easy way out, but he did it his way and he did it beautifully.